Hello. Welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason and this is Chronic Pain Tuesday, I think. Um, Chronic Pain Tuesday number two and it's every Tuesday. So I said the word Tuesday quite a lot so far. So the idea of these sessions is for you to find different ways to change how you feel regarding uh, chronic pain issues. So I did something that I, I really don't normally do before recording this is I listened to the last session that I made, the session I made last week, last Tuesday. And I just hope that I haven't got any uh, bits of flake, cause I've just eaten a chocolate flake, making sure I haven't got anything in my beard. But yeah, so I re-listened, well I listened to it for the first time. I don't normally listen to my stuff. Once I record it, it's gone, it's done and I just move on. So I wanted to kind of, um, the reason for that is I wanted to have some kind of momentum, continuity, whatever you want to call it, um, from session to session. So last week I talked about self-limitations, I talked about the chronic pain, the part of the body with the pain in, that it's not attacking you, that you don't have to attack it back. Um, and a lot of the problems with chronic pain, with people with issues like that, is we're attacking it because we feel that it's attacking us. And that's the natural, that's the natural thing to do is really, if someone's attacking us, if a person is attacking us verbally, let's say that we attack back. And it's not necessarily the best course of action, but it is uh, quite often the natural course of action, the natural response or reaction to being attacked. So what I talked about was the idea that actually we're not being attacked. We're not physically being attacked. It's just a physical sensation. Regardless of the intensity, regardless of the physical sensation and how it feels, it is just a physical sensation. There's no more than that. It's, that's all it is. It's not attacking us. It's not trying to cause us harm. Even though there is, you know, there may have been suffering involved and there may still be suffering involved to a certain degree. But that suffering, so much of the suffering to do with chronic pain is the suffering we give ourselves. First of all, by denying it's there, not wanting it to be there and trying to push it away. And the more you push something away, the stronger it becomes. You know, it's like trying to, trying to close a door against someone who's trying to push the door open. The more you push it closed, the harder it gets to push it closed because the more the person that's pushing it open pushes it. It's kind of one of those kind of situations. I like the analogy of the hose pipe. Stand on the hose pipe. The water can't move out anymore. The water's on. It can't squirt out of the hose pipe anymore. But the pressure is building up. A lot you know because it's not supposed to be blocked so the pressure is really really bold building up so when you do take maybe you take your finger off the, the bottom the end of the hose pipe or you take your foot off the middle of the hose pipe it really lets go you know it squirts everywhere the water is so much more powerful so much more uh, pressure is so much higher so trying to deny the pain, trying to ignore it, 
um, can sometimes be um, the same kind of effect, can have the same kind of, of effect as standing on a hose pipe. Just builds the pressure up. Even to the point is if you had the tap running on a drip. So if you had the tap running, so the hose pipe would just drip. Every 30 seconds, a little drip would come out. That's nothing. You'd think, well, wow, that's nothing. It's, you know, that's just nothing, such a small amount. But if you put your foot onto that hose pipe and you just stood there for hours and hours and hours, the pressure would build up to the point when you did take your foot off, it would just squirt out as strong as it was if it was on full, you know. So wouldn't it be easier just to let it drip? That's my kind of theory that wouldn't it be easier just to let it be there? Let that physical sensation, wherever it is in your body, let it be there, accept that it's there. Don't try and push it away, but just accept that it's there and allow it just to drip. Drip every 30 seconds, every minute, whatever it is, just let it drip slowly because there's no pressure. There's literally no pressure at all with that. So the more time you spend trying to deny that there's that physical uh, issue, that's just you putting your foot onto the hose pipe. And then it can be like a vicious circle. That's me doing a circle. In a sense of, you then take your foot off the hose pipe. And then you get that overflow, just like, you know, much more water squirts out than would be normal. And then that kind of justifies putting your foot back onto the hose pipe. Because too much water's come out, too much to handle, all in one go. So when we're trying to ignore something and pretend it's not there, like a physical sensation that we're discussing, So we're going about our business, finding different ways to just ignore it. Well, there's nothing wrong with ignoring it. I mean, I'm, that's quite a useful thing to do sometimes if you're able to, but denying it's there. You know, using all your, all your resources and pressure to put your foot onto that hose pipe. And the more pressure you feel you can feel that pressure and you don't want to feel the result of that pressure because you know it's going to be big then you do take your foot off and you feel that physical sensation and it is big and it's horrible so you want to put your foot back onto the hose pipe to stop that sensation that horrible physical feeling that you don't like but then you feel the pressure again and the pressure is uncomfortable. And you associate the pressure with the pain. And you take your foot off again. You know, you have to acknowledge it because it's, it's basically, it's slapping you around the face saying, look, look at me, look at me, look at me. 
you know so you have to look at it you have to face it you have to face the pain see it you can't ignore it all the time and then you you know you you see it and it's there and it's pressure and it's big and you want to put your foot down on the hose pipe again because it's too much to deal with and it's going on and on like that my idea is you just take your foot off the hose pipe and you realize that actually once that initial pressure is gone there is no more pressure the tap is on low and maybe if it's not low enough turn it on lower so that it drips less physically in your mind turn the tap so that it's at a comfortable level but allow some to come out because for whatever reason maybe that's needed maybe it's not needed maybe it can be turned off completely that's up to you but just allow it so just a little bit and come out and notice the difference between that drip 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 maybe less often than that maybe every minute notice the difference in intensity physical and emotional intensity of that compared to the full-blown pressure <clears throat> and then letting it all go There's a, there's a big, big difference between that. To have to experience, I say have to, but you know, sometimes it's hard to ignore something that's there. You know, it's, it's there. And you, you can feel the pressure and then you just comes and then you have to kind of face it, I guess. But the difference between being forced to face something and choosing to face something is like they're worlds apart. When you choose to face that physical sensation, that if you choose to face that part of your body that in the past you felt was causing you problems, you can notice actually that it's not really causing you problems. It's not out to get you. It's not, you know, it's, you're not at war with that part of your body. That part of your body doesn't dislike you or want to cause you harm. It's just a physical part of your body with a physical sensation, a feeling, a bodily, bodily feeling. And any emotional reaction is yours. You can own those emotions. And you can decide whether you want them or not. Because that part of your body is not causing how you feel emotionally. Your emotional feelings is your reaction to that physical sensation. And you're more than that. And my camera's just moved down on its own. I'm going to move it back again. That was weird. I thought the chair was breaking. I don't think this ever happened in a, a recording. Ever. Where the microphone, the, the camera rather, has just slid, <laughs> slid down. Um, anyway. Hello again. I'm still here. If that had been the other camera, that would have uh, broken. The whole session would have just have to redo it again as soon as I touched the camera. So at least it's still running. Right, that, dis that distracted me, that did. So, those emotions that you have in your mind that you feel, maybe you did feel, 
before you decided to watch this and maybe open your mind up to new possibilities is you felt that those emotions were connected to that physical sensation in your body. And it's logical to feel that way. It's, it's absolutely logical. And uh, yeah, I'm not here to mock anyone and say, well, you feel that way, but you shouldn't because it's silly. And no, it's perfectly normal to have that, uh, to have that reaction. But on the other side, you don't have to. Because the emotional side really is not got nothing to do with the physical pain. It's your reaction to the physical pain. So the physical sensations, it might trigger, it might trigger that, that, you know, that reaction, that emotional reaction to thinking, oh no, not again, or this, and I hate this, and you feel like you're being attacked by your part of your body, but you're not. That part of your body is just doing what it does. And in all fairness, what you say to yourself in your mind, I discussed this in the last video, does actually have a huge impact on how you experience that part of your body. So, this isn't a situation where you get to blame yourself because I've got no interest in self-blame Got no interest in you know blame at all really there's no I don't think there's any any um, room really in my life for blame and I don't think there needs to be any room for anybody for blame there's certain situations of course where we can say well yeah it was an accident but you know I caused the accident but it was an accident but why blame yourself for how you're feeling you know I I broke my wrist last year falling out of the bath which was quite funny at the time not at the time not in the in, in the actual moment when I was lying on the bathroom floor unable to move not knowing quite what I'd done very dazed luckily I didn't hit my head but I did hurt my body, side of my, you know, my, my ribs, and my, and I was laying on my left side, which is my left wrist was broken, and I couldn't get up because that was the side that I needed to push up, and I'm quite heavy. Um, I wouldn't want to carry me. I wouldn't want to lift me upstairs, no. So the point is, it's all healed. It's all healed now. But you know, if I get a bit of an ache in there, sometimes I do. But if I, if you know, if in later years I get an ache in my, get problems with my left wrist and it's achy, um, what am I going to do? Am I going to blame myself? Am I going to chastise myself? Call myself names? Be horrible to myself? because you know i fell out of the bath when i was 45 and you know now i'm 65 let's say you know and uh, maybe i've got arthritis in in the bones and maybe that was triggered by the fall I don't, I don't know but you know maybe i can't use my left arm as much as i could before what 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 would be the point in that what possible gain is there uh, and I guess that's going down the road of regrets and yeah, we've all got regrets I imagine I definitely have but not not that many that like have a huge and emotional impact on me but you can't regret f having an accident it's not something that's regretting something that you have no control over. I could have not got in the bath that day. Well, you know, that's not, there's no logic in that. You know, it's, uh, 
So the point is, why have a go at yourself? I'm sorry for traumatizing anybody that had an image of me in a bath. Um, <laughs> I do apologize, I should have put a warning on the video. It may cause trauma, emotional trauma, a visualization of Jason in the bath. But uh, what is the point? Seriously, what is the point in having a go at yourself, blaming yourself? Blame is just such a pointless emotion, such a pointless thought patterns, pointless. Everything to do with blame and blaming is just stupid as far as I'm concerned. Just for the simple fact that it causes suffering to everybody involved, you know. Um, maybe the person doing the blaming feels in some way that they can enjoy that. They can enjoy being, uh, you know, looking down at that person. They can enjoy feeling uh, superior, maybe. But I, I, f I still feel that they're suffering because anyone that's angry. Uh, it's not I don't class anger as a, a nice emotion to have it that for me doesn't feel nice we've all been angry at times that's a horrible feeling personally maybe I'm wrong but that's how I feel it's an absolutely horrible feeling to have the feeling of anger um, so why would you want it against yourself? Why would you want it against a part of your body? You're angry or your leg because it's painful or because you maybe you have trouble walking. To be angry at that part of your body. To feel that that part of your body is attacking you and is uh, causing you this uh, problem, this disability, this issue, physical issue. Well, neither of those things are happening. You know, your body isn't out to get you. And you don't have to be out to get your body. You don't have to defend yourself against your own body. You know, it doesn't have to be angry at that part which has the physical discomfort. You know, I don't know if this, does any of this make sense? The idea that accepting, having a little bit of acceptance. that that physical issue is there maybe so let's say you've got a physical part of your body as opposed to a non-physical part of your body but just you've got a part of your body which is you know has a physical element which is not very pleasant yeah so you've got maybe chronic pain in your knee for example and you've got it because of a reason you know there's a reason is maybe it's arthritis maybe it could be many different things but it's there maybe due to an injury but it's there and you know what maybe you've got an issue with your with your, your knee that is lifelong maybe that's just how it's going to be now uh, for the future and it's you know, doctors and surgeons can't do anything about it. So it's a case of accepting that that's your situation. Accepting that that part of your body at times is maybe, you know, it's like use the word uncomfortable, feels uncomfortable. But there's a, a real difference between accepting that that part of your body has these feelings and just opening yourself up to it and saying well okay 
this is what's happening this is the truth this is what is real what is now and just opening yourself up to it accepting it the difference between that and putting your foot onto the hose pipe you know and stopping the, the the pain coming through those physical sensations stopping them coming through because you don't want them which is understandable who does you know no one wants it no one wants indigestion no one wants to catch a cold no one yeah but it's it's just what happens in life we all dealt we all we all i was going to say we all dealt our cards but that's a bit not really perhaps what i feel we all have our own issues to deal with whether it's physical whether it's mental where you know whatever it is we all have our individual issues to yeah just to live with to accept and you've got kind of two choices there you accept or you ignore it or you know within the ignoring it it's part of let's use the word ignorance no one likes to be called ignorant i don't think it's a very kind of negative word but i would say what do, what does the meaning of ignorance mean is the word ignorance would in my head mean not knowing certain things so when someone's ignorant ign i'm trying to say the word ignorant about let's say uh that part of their body and why they've got that physical sensation so maybe you know they don't realize that there is a way of changing your perception and it is all about perception which is weird i know it's a strange kind of thing uh, a lot of people have said it in the past and it's like yeah 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 how i feel you know how i think about something will change how i feel about it and well yeah it's true um as true as rain comes from no, travels downwards please don't tell me that rain travels upwards just in case of <laughs> there's some kind of weird uh, uh, scientific thing that I don't know about but I'm just saying some things are true you know gravity chuck a rock in the air and it's gonna land on the floor or at the target <laughs> that you've thrown it at so some things are just that's how it is now how you think about that part of your body or how you think about suffering or if you use the word suffering if you feel that you're um, suffering then you're gonna suffer that's kind of like a pretty good certain certainty there but if you think that you know what just a physical image you know it's a physical thing it's just a a damaged part of the body you know the left hand doesn't work but the right hand does good the right hand works is there anything i can do about the left hand not working if there is then do it if there isn't, well, I've got the right hand. Or do I have to spend all my time thinking about the loss of not having the left hand working in the same way it used to? Do I have to think about all the things that I'm not able to do? Do I have to turn myself into this victim? I have to engage in the suffering and really you know get into it or do I say 
Well, the right hand works. The rest of my body is working. It's just one part. And take your hand or your foot, whatever it is, off of the hose pipe and let it drip. And just feel it. Notice how much easier it is to handle that physical sensation when it's just happening slowly. It's much easier to just let it be there. Without condemning it, without having a go at it, without being rude to it, without trying to ignore it. Because, you know, there are distracting techniques, and I will be talking about those in the future, but ignoring it isn't a distraction technique. Pushing it away is not a distraction technique, really. A distraction technique would be continuing to let it drip. then to do something else you know and also remembering that not everything is right for everyone and that's why I've got 600 over 600 videos and mp3s is because I know I've always felt this that you know one pain relief technique is not enough for everybody one relaxation technique is not enough for everybody. One sleep, you know, insomnia technique is not enough for everybody. We've all got our particular likes, our particular triggers that can have an effect on us. Which is why I like to do a variety of different sessions, different techniques, different ideas at the moment really this is kind of an idea this is just talking about it I'm not giving you a technique specifically you know now think of this think of that do this do that just talking about it because talking about something can change how you feel and you might not even know why you might not even realize why you might not you may not care why but there's something different happens, something real changes. And it's, it's about up there. Because once that changes, once your mind changes, then physically has an effect. That's the control center. not just there but I'm talking about inside your mind is what changes first and it loosens it grows you know the self limitations start to just melt and then what you see is possibilities for now and for the future and you can start to think to yourself well if listening to this bloke with a beard me just listening to him for half an hour can actually change the way I feel about certain things what else can I feel different about what else can you change your mind That sentence in itself, change your mind. You know, people say, I've changed my mind. In real words, that changed mind. So, literally, someone has changed the way their mind works and come up with a different decision, come up with a, uh, a more open 
idea, a more useful solution, a healthier behaviour. So this is all about ideas, chucking out ideas and just seeing what comes from it. Seeing what possibilities are available. And you're the only one that really knows what possibilities are available because they're all inside your mind. Your creativity is greater than anything you will ever see on a YouTube video or listen on an, a hypnosis audio or self-help book. Your mind has much more than that already inside you. Your creativity can come up with anything equal to the best novel that's ever been written. Not that there is a best novel, but you know, you have the capacity inside you to create a solution for all problems or issues that arise in your life. You have the potential to do anything you choose to be happy and safe in the knowledge that you really can make a difference just by changing your mind so this is the end of this session And this is Chronic Pain Tuesday number two. So the next one will be next Tuesday, which will be on the 20th of uh, December. So take care of yourselves. Have a great week. And just wonder to yourself, what ideas will come up and how your mind affects your body and by changing your mind will change your physical sensations and know that every time you listen to my voice hear me talk something changes it's like a trigger and it's all positive it's all healthy and it's all safe For you to enjoy the week ahead feeling wonderful so take care of yourselves bye